in the city of lights, or if you prefer the city that never sleeps. For tonight, a city that will rock to the excitement of the Campbell Supercross Series finale. Las Vegas, Nevada, the scene of the action. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Spain with Larry Myers. Welcome to Las Vegas, where you can bet on this. There are two very different outlooks in this field tonight. For Jeremy McGrath, with the championship safely in his pocket, it's a big celebration of the 93 season. And for everybody else, well, they're going to have to go out and find their incentive to race here tonight because they certainly can't catch Jeremy. No, they can't, Dave. But there are some incentives, I think. Um, pride, you know, that comes to mind. Jeff Stanton has not won a race this year. Uh, he's a three-time Supercross and defending champ. And uh, he's got to be hurting down inside a little bit. Damon Bradshaw, uh, Mike LaRocco, the season's not gone the way they wanted it to go. They've got to be hurting downside a little bit. And I think that uh, they're really going to be putting forth 110% to try to take uh, this season finale. But um, something else comes to mind. I think that maybe they're sitting back in the pits and they're going to approach this night as the kickoff to 1994. What are they going to do different in their program? That's got to be running through their mind to whip Jeremy McGrath next year. That may be the program for all the guys who didn't win the championship, but I guarantee you this about Jeremy. He is going to spend tonight savoring one of the great accomplishments of all time in Supercross. The newly crowned king of the Camel Series is standing by with our Art Ekman. Thanks, Dave. Jeremy, 10 unprecedented victories in a season. More importantly, the Supercross Championship. You took the sport to a new level. The other veterans didn't respond to that new level. What's the difference here? Well, I think it may have to do with a little bit of attitude. I think these other guys, maybe they're a little bit, you know, tense out there. They've, they've worried about it a little bit too much, and I think I'm the opposite. I try and just go with the flow and, you know, attack the track the best I know how. You attack the track rather than the other riders? Yeah, I go out there and try and attack the track, ride the track as fast as I can, and uh, usually I'm ahead of the riders. The other riders are already thinking about ways they can improve their performance for next year. What about your off-season? Well, right now I'm not thinking about off-season. We have nine more 125 nationals, and uh, I'm thinking a little bit about that right now. But after that, I would say I'm going to have to take in a few trips like Havasu and uh, take a little vacation. A well-deserved vacation. <laughs> Let's go now to a guy who had a lot of off-season celebrations after championship years, Bob Hanna. Thanks, Art. If I might point out that in addition to some of the titles, that there are a lot of seasons that ended in frustration. The key is to use that frustration to help you. Learn your weak points, go home and work on them, and come back next year stronger. We talked to some of the riders earlier about next year, and here's what they had to say. Yeah, for me, it, you know, it's definitely to get started now. At the beginning of last, or this year, I had the speed, and... Uh, you know, I was in good shape and I had everything going, but uh, with the injury, it kind of set me way back. So I'll do again at the end of this year what I did last year. You know, I felt that I was ready and, I, you know, hopefully I can carry it through the season. No, I don't think so. I just think, uh, you know, I had a bad year. Um, you know, things, you know, like last year, things didn't go my way. Um, I, I think I had a lot better year than I did last year. I won a lot more races this year. I haven't. But uh, I don't think it's a matter of changing my style or changing my game plan. I think it's just a matter of winning races. Uh, next year, be stronger. I mean, that's, that's my main concern. Be stronger and more consistent. You know, just go out every race and try to play top five. And not try to win every race, but try to be in the top five. I think that's what McGrath was doing at the beginning of the year. And he started winning easy, so he realized that he, he can't be beat. You know, the only way he can be beat is to beat himself. I've won enough championships and uh, races to know that uh, there's no magic answers out there. you got to do what works for you. Well, whatever the game plan for the offseason, tonight's task is clear, get through the heat race and into the main. We'll be back with the action. Yeah, the team definitely makes a difference. I mean, we got the four best guys out there. It's just another day for me. Just going out there and knowing you're the best. I don't try and intimidate anybody. I'm out here to win the race, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, if anything, they probably try and intimidate me, but it doesn't work. We try to just get a winning effort going and so these guys can go out uh, on the track and do what they need to do. Yeah, definitely got to get a good start, and of course, be on the best bikes out there, which are Hondas. Best bike color is red. That's fast. Doesn't mean. These guys have to be the ambassador of the sport. You don't win 10 races with luck. Good, lucky, I don't mind that. Good, lucky, that's kind of cool. There is no luck. Well, there's a little bit of luck. The CRs are definitely the best bikes. They're just the best. They always win. Improve it. The psychological effect that red has over other colors. The CRs are fast. Blazing fast. Red hot. <laughs> Just keep them on, on bikes that can win races, and they're pretty happy. Yeah. 
at Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Las Vegas, Nevada. The riders are at the gate for the first of our qualifying heat races from which they will travel to the main event. And this is the course they'll ride tonight, Larry. A relatively small track. A lot of turns, a lot of jumps, a lot of whoops. The riders like it. Should provide some interesting action. Let's take a look at how these guys will qualify for the main event. That is the first goal. Heats and semis, the elimination. As we watch Guy Cooper preparing for his very last Supercross race. Two heats, top four from each, transfer directly to the championship main event. If you don't make it out of the heat, you've got to ride the semi. We'll take the top five from each of two. Last chance qualifier will fill the 19th and 20th starting spots in the 20-lap main event. We'll take a look now at the highlights of the first of those qualifying heat races, and it will be the opportunity to see Guy Cooper in action. Cooper, who has never won a Supercross race, but through his career has certainly thrilled the fans and become one of the most popular riders in the history of this tour. At age 31, he's prepared to wrap it all up here tonight. He made the announcement before the race. This will be his last Supercross event. Gate drops, brief moment of glory for number 17, Larry Brooks, who cannot stand success and gets into the whoopie doos and takes a left and says, I'm out of here, and that leaves Jeff Stanton and Sean Kalos to battle. Take a look at the shaded portions of the racetrack. There's a lot of mud out there or soft conditions as Kalos comes to the inside. Watch what happens. Exactly. Yep, another one of those Brooks things. Uh, he saw Brooks do it, says, I can do it better than that, and he did. He went down. That leaves the battle up front between uh, a couple of the heroes. Stanton, of course, the defending champ, and here here comes Cooper. Cooper was really trying hard, Dave, and I think probably just a little too hard. Watch what happens here. Cooper uh, is going to make one of these uh, passes to Guy Cooper. High five and jump. His left hand completely off the handlebar. That could have hurt. He's not done yet, unfortunately. He came just a little short on the triple there, and you'll see he was having trouble with the whoops all night as he's challenged now by number three, Mike Kadrowski. You may be wondering about the mud. This is Las Vegas. It rarely rains in Nevada. They watered this course heavily to keep the dust down during the course of the evening, so early in the racing, it's a bit sloppy. Kadrowski makes a move, and Cooper makes a mistake, and suddenly Kadrowski is second, and Cooper is struggling for third. You get a glimpse of Jeff Emick back there in fourth, as we recall the top four will transfer. Again, Trouble with the timing, trouble with the rhythm. Cooper is just not on his game tonight, and that's got to be a big disappointment. At this point, Emig comes up and tries to take this spot away. Yeah, Emig gets a little squirrely there. The mud caused that. I shouldn't say mud. It's not mud. It's just a soft condition. Too much throttle as he was into the corner. Spun him sideways and dropped him back, at least temporarily, uh, back behind Guy Cooper. Uh, the, the, the key to those, those uh, bumps, those stutter bumps, Dave, rhythm, all rhythm. And if you try a little bit too hard, you grab just a little bit too much throttle, then your rhythm is going to go away. That's what has happened to Cooper out there. He is just trying so hard. Meanwhile, Emig to the inside says, I'll not make that mistake again. And if I do, I'm in position to take Cooper out. <laughs> He'll <laughs> block my ball. So uh, that battle is over. Now, here's the good one up front. This is Kudrowski going after Stanton for the lead for a moment. Had the good line. Stanton says, nah, the inside will turn into the outside and then right back into the inside. Now I'll be in the right spot. And Stanton held on. But as you can see, he's not razor sharp either. Feet off the pegs for a moment. Kudrowski putting on intense pressure here. And this is the pride battle we talked about. Second and third place men in the standings just racing for the opportunity to get into the main, but neither of them willing to give it up here. Now this racetrack, as Stanton takes the checkered flag, we'll see throughout the evening is excellent. The riders really like it. Stanton takes the win. Kudrowski second. Jeff Emig third. Guy Cooper fourth. Let's go to the winner. Jeff, last race of the year. Uh, nothing really at stake out there but your egos in that first qualifier. It looked like everything was at stake. Yeah, I just outride my race. I'm finally getting to where I feel good. It's too bad it's the last race, but uh, hey, I'll take it. Uh, are you looking forward for the main event tonight? Yeah, definitely am. I feel good. No pressure drawn, you know, so I'll just go out and ride my best. Well, I hope you have some good luck for a change, Jeff. Thanks. And with that, we'll move on to qualifying heat number two, looking for four more riders to go directly to the championship main event, and we'll have the opportunity to see the national Supercross champion, the newly crowned champ, number 15,
Jeremy McGrath in action. The drop of the gate, there were some surprises in this one. Look at the whole shot, the number 43, Ezra Lust. That in itself is not a surprise. We've seen Ezra out front before. <laughs> big surprise all over the world. Folks, we're betting right now as uh, poor Mr. Nicholas, John Nicholas, uh, bites the ground there on that start, but they were betting that Jeremy McGrath would get a whole shot. <laughs> That's what happened. That's the surprise. Mike Larocco in second, Jeff Matasovich third, and McGrath back in fourth. What an unusual sight. And barely into fourth here as he has to make a move on Brian Manley, number 44, to pick up that spot, then sets his sights on Matasovich, and you see some of the struggles going on with this soft soil condition out front. Lusk in pretty good shape for the moment, but he too will have some difficulties. Yeah, with, uh, you mentioned surprises. Boy, he's going to get a big one here in just a short as Larocco takes over the number one position. He's uh, in the location, the same stadium, where he won his first ever Supercross race. Here comes the surprise for Lusk. Ouch, boy, that has to hurt. You take a bite of the ground, and man, that That's was worth a replay. I think. Yeah, I think so, too. He just lost it in that move section. It's been giving guys trouble all night long. It goes back to that timing, and uh, when it's slippery, you know, soft conditions, they spin the wheel just a little bit, lose some of the traction, and timing goes away. Now here comes a battle for the number one position. Now both of these guys won their first ever Supercross event right here in Las Vegas. Matasovich's case, it was his only Supercross victory. Morocco has gone on to win a couple more, but uh, they both, uh, I think, are trying to recapture moments of past glory. Absolutely. Morocco, number five, the leader, number 12, Matasevich in second. Here comes Jeremy McGrath, number 15, up the inside with a great pass on Matasevich. And McGrath, on only a couple of occasions during the season, has had to pass a lot of folks. Tonight seeming to be one of those nights, and he's in great shape until he falls on the ground. Another major surprise here in uh, heat race number two. He's not done that too often this year. I think, what, twice he's been down on the ground, and uh, both times recovering, and certainly he's going to do it again. Morocco takes the checkers. And uh, McGrath's uh, crash really didn't cost him much. He's third behind uh, Matasevich, as we hear from the winner, Mike Larocco. Uh, Mike, you've won here before in Las Vegas. Does that get you pumped up to win a main here this week? Uh, I think more than that is uh, the last race of the year, last chance I have to, uh, you know, win another Supercross. So I think that would get me more pumped up than anything. Uh, contract time or just for yourself? Uh, probably for both. You know, more for myself because I, you know, wanted to get back on top after my injury, so I can still do it. So I guess that has a lot to do with the contract for next year, too. Well, last chance for this year's uh, Supercross win. Good luck tonight, Mike. Thanks a lot, Bob. Meanwhile, back in the pits, Guy Cooper pondering his final main event of his career. We'll be back. Time for the semifinal action. These are the non-qualifiers out of the heat races. Got some good talent in the lineup here as we look for the top five from each of two events to move into the championship main event. Certainly one of the guys to watch here will be Doug Henry, number 16, who's been very impressive in a couple of rides on the 250s, but didn't do very well in his heat race and is thus relegated to the semifinal. Henry, who earlier wrapped up the Eastern Region 125 championship, uh, arguably following the career path of the likes of Brian Swink and Jeremy McGrath. So I think, uh, Dave, let me just stop you right there and say that I think he'd rather follow in the career steps of Jeremy McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a choice. I suppose that's true. Number 47, Kalos, who's been impressive here tonight, jumps out with 17, Larry Brooks. Brooks this time finds that first uh, right-hander and hangs on to the lead, unlike the heat race. You see number 23, Danny Stevenson, moving up into third spot, challenging Kalos. And Henry's away in about fifth or sixth spot quickly picks up a position and sets his sights on number 38, Todd DeHoo. Well, the important thing in semifinals is to finish just as high as you possibly can. It gives you a better pick on the uh, gate, and of course, we've heard from so many of the veterans that the start is also important. Sean Kalos, with a great line on the inside, puts the move on Larry Brooks. He takes over the number one position. At this point in time, well, remember Kalos, of course, was a guy that was battling with Stanton. I have to think now the first couple of positions are set in their minds, and really they're not too concerned with passing each other. They're going to look behind for Stevenson to come up. Here comes Doug Henry to the inside of Duhu. He makes the pass, and uh, now the uh, top spots are set, and they look behind him, as I said, because they don't want to be passed. That is the critical thing. Wind goes to Kalos. Here comes a good move coming up on the part of Henry. Last lap around the outside. He got Stevenson. He wanted Brooks. He's alongside, but Brooks found the traction. Didn't quite get there. Give Henry one more position 
on the very last turn of the last lap. He'll finish third behind Kalos and Brooks. Stevenson and Swink will transfer, and we'll go to Bob Hanna with the winner. Sean, uh, early season uh, didn't start out the way you'd like it. You missed a couple races. Now you seem to be coming back strong. Yeah, I feel pretty good. You know, I've had a lot of things that's uh, been going on with me, and... Uh, I don't know my speed and talent is there. It's just uh, things have to start coming together. I've, I got uh, married and I've been sick with the chicken pox, but uh, I'm coming back strong. And, uh, I'm trying to put on a good strong finish at the straight end of last national. Uh, looking forward to the main tonight. The track good? Yeah, the track's really good. The heat race is a little bit muddy and slick, but uh, it's pretty fun actually. But uh, I made a mistake and went down, but uh, it's pretty good. It's real tight, but it's real tactical and still a place for the pass, so it's really good. All right, good luck at the main. Las Vegas. Are you having a good time? And so we go to semifinal number two, looking for five more men to join Sean Kalos in the championship feature. And surprise of all surprises, Damon Bradshaw finds himself in the semifinal here tonight. Damon's having some trouble with his racetrack, it seems. And he gets a pretty good start on number eight, not as good as number 21, Steve Lampson, who grabs the whole shot jumps out front. The other guy that will surprise us a bit here is number 197. That is Mark Easley. You'll see number 40, Doug Boyson, did a good start. And number 20 is Cliff Palmer. Cliff Palmer aboard the KTM has made every main event this season. And that's not too shabby. Only a handful of guys have uh, done that. And the KTM rider is one of them. Damon Bradshaw, as you said, has had some problems with this racetrack. He was earlier complaining, he was hurt to be complaining, that it's a one-line track. He said there's nowhere to pass because of the soft conditions. Well, Bradshaw is going to find himself a new line here coming up on Steve Lampson. Then Lampson is going to come back and show Bradshaw a couple more. I think the problem Damon may be having is uh, difficulty of recollection because he has said that every racetrack we've raced on this year has been a one-line racetrack. He found a line there and makes a great pass at his back startled Lampson who almost went out and hit the hay bale. I don't think Lampson was expecting him to use that line, but look at Steve come back. Damon has had a terrible, terrible season and has not missed the opportunity to uh, to find excuses quite frankly yeah well it, it comes with all of the frustrations he doesn't know where to go things have not gone right for him i don't know if it's the motorcycle if it's just damon he is not riding the way he rode a year ago or even two years ago no question in my mind in my opinion damon is one of the fastest in the world but he's not exhibited uh, that this year here's cliff palmer number 20 and palmer has trouble in that whoop de do section well, that's a, that's a tricky number right there, and if you get it wrong, as Palmer did, you pay a big penalty. In his case, he killed the engine and lost a terrific amount of ground. And so as the battle continues up front between Lamson and Bradshaw, and a good race indeed, that, that will drop Cliff Palmer back into what will become an exciting battle for the last transfer spot. But this is good. Look at these guys. Hannah yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go back and say that, you know, Steve Lampson is a very, very good uh, rider. Otherwise, he would have no factory contract. We're watching Poison and Eric Kehoe. Kehoe getting the inside line and makes the pass. Back to Bradshaw for just a second, though. Uh, a year ago, I'm guaranteeing you this, that he would have uh, eaten uh, uh, poor Lampson alive, and he's just not able to do that this year. That's That's been the problem all season long. Let's pick up this battle between Mark Easley, number 197, 22, Eric Kehoe, and number 20, Cliff Palmer, who had that problem. They are racing like crazy here for that final transfer spot. Kehoe comes up on the inside. Easley, for the moment, is fourth, and then jumping past both of them, here comes Palmer. Good race. <laughs> all of them are going to make it into the main, but they're looking, I think, to move themselves up just one more notch and get a better pick on the game. Besides, it's a race. You know, when racers get out there, the heck with everything. We're going with the checkered flag. Here comes our winner, Lampson. Well, Lampson will have the opportunity to go to Victory Lane and visit Bob Hanna, Bradshaw second, Kehoe, Palmer, and Easley come home in that order. Steve, both you and Bradshaw only need first and second to qualify, yet you guys still battled bars out there the whole race. Uh, what was up? Um, I just need the momentum, and I wanted to win back, so I didn't really do good in my heat race. So um, I just went for it, and I needed the speed for the main, so I just thought I'd take it, you know, like I was racing the main and try to win. A uh, good time to practice your speed for the main. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, that, our heat race, it was really slick and um, dried out a little bit, and it tracks pretty good now. All right, good luck. Thanks a lot, Bob. The final two transfers to the main event go to Mike Fisher and Todd DeHoop out of the last champ qualifier. When we come back, 125 action. Jimmy Gaddis racing in front of the hometown fans. We'll be back.
in the 125 class local boy Jimmy Gaddis is here to wrap up the championship. It's exciting, you know, to be able to, especially in your hometown, come home, come back home and uh, hopefully take the championship here. And everybody uh, at Pro Circuit works really hard, you know, and maybe it's maybe harder than the factory team, you know, because uh, they're out to prove something. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I was happy that I got an opportunity to be on the team and, and um, to prove myself that I could ride and I could win a championship and hopefully I will tonight. Well, a ninth place finish here tonight is all Jimmy Gaddis needs to wrap up the championship from Phil Lawrence. Phil had a bad race last time out, and that is the difference as we drop the gate here to show you the highlights of this 125 championship finale. Gate is down, charged to turn one, and Jimmy's got a pretty good start, but not as good as number 86. This is Damon Huffman, the man who might have been champion. This is the tangle in the back. Number 890 is Pedro Gonzalez, and this is a bad break for the Mexican kid up to ride the series. Fifth rank, hoping to have the opportunity to move up tonight. Isn't going to happen because he got stuck in the back. Pedro has uh, progressively gotten stronger as the season has gone on, as has rider number 86. To watch the move coming up by Jimmy Gaddis. 86, Damon Huffman, 69, the champion uh, 2B. Gaddis makes the move to the inside, squares it off, takes over the lead, but not for long. The better drive and control belong to Huffman. He takes over the number one position uh, for the second time this evening, and uh, it's going to be history. He's going to win that. Meanwhile, back in the pack, this is the guy that needed to win, and he uh, started like in 12th place. Bill Lawrence, second week in a row. He's having a disastrous race. Goodbye, championship. It's all over. Bill certainly won the hearts of the fans here in Las Vegas in a pre-race interview when he said that regardless of the outcome tonight, he was a better rider than Jimmy Gaddis. Jimmy's from Las Vegas, and the locals didn't respond well to that at all. Yeah, in fairness to Phil, he was trying to psych Gaddis out a little bit, trying to make him nervous. Phil said that later. In, Boy, fairness, to, in fairness to Phil, that was a dumb thing to do. It rained booze. It rained, literally poured booze. James Dobb moving up. We saw a glimpse of him, rider number 100. Here comes Lawrence again. He said, hey, where are they all Go. What am I doing back here? Bill turned in a great ride here. He started 12th. He knew he had to win and hope for bad luck for Gaddis to have a chance for the championship. He was passing people at every turn. It was just an inspired performance, but it was too little too late for Bill. Here's a good move right here as he picks up two spots, cuts down to the inside. He'll eventually go all the way to third. Meanwhile, Kyle Lewis in a battle for position here. Let me ask you this question. When a rider says, I don't want to wish any bad luck on my opponent, ooh, a little bump and run move there. When a, when a rider says that, Dave, does he really mean it, or is he really saying, gosh, I hope that guy has some oh, bad no, luck? Oh, no, no, they really need that. Here's the guy we're watching is James Dobb. That's number 100. This is the, uh, the British kid who says he wants to ride the entire series here next year. And he moves in to fourth spot with a pass on uh, Tommy Clowers and now sets his sights on the 71 of Kyle Lewis. And as you see, he is bringing Phil Lawrence right with him. They've hooked up together and are charging to the front. The Dobbs kid impresses me. He rides for the uh, Pro Circuit Split Fire team. It's a semi-private cheer effort under the... Uh, uh, Kawasaki banner and uh, he makes that pass on Lewis and he moves up one more notch meanwhile up front Damon Huffman saying goodbye to the rest of the pack takes his fourth win of the year Dave yeah he was very impressive but Gaddis wins the championship Huffman had problems with an injury earlier in the year and so Jimmy Gaddis is crowned here tonight in Las Vegas and as he takes second spot in the race and first spot in the point standings the fans are on their feet and boy is he happy here come the members of the split fire team to congratulate not only Gaddis, but also Dobb. Dobb lost the spot on the last lap to Phil Lawrence, but is nonetheless thrilled for the top five and also thrilled for his teammates. Yeah, I think just a few seconds ago, I incorrectly identified uh, Dobb as a privateer. Really, uh, he's working uh, also out of that split fire effort as well as uh, Team Green. Uh, that's the uh, Kawasaki effort here in the 125 class. You saw them holding up a jersey that, uh, that had a number one on it that they had prepared <laughs> for Jimmy and Les. Join in the celebration here. Listen to this. <laughs> There's a happy kid. Jimmy said earlier, I want to win this in front of my hometown fans. He made that one effort on uh, Huffman, and I think he wisely backed off the pace and said, whoa, what am I doing here? What exactly. I need to do is finish. Hoffman wins the race. Gaddis wins the championship. Lawrence gave it all he had. Dobbs and Lewis round out the top five. Gonzalez came back from that horrible start to finish eighth. Let's hear from the winner.
Well, Damon, you're looking a little bit like McGrath. You're starting to whole shot and run away with it. I bet you wish the uh, series was a little longer. Yeah, I sure do. You know, I had trouble at the first, uh, the second and third round. And uh, after that, I really much put it together. And uh, my bike's been running really good. Um, Suzuki's been helping me out more. And I think we're a winning team now. And I'm really happy with my Suzuki and my mechanic and all the sponsors who helped me out through the years. So you're looking forward to some outdoor rides now? Yeah, now I can just concentrate on that. Um, and a week and a half, I graduate school, and that was a goal of mine. I wanted to graduate first before, you know, I did it full time. And it looks like I'm going to do that, and I'm really, you know, looking forward to the outdoors. Well, it's a nice ride tonight. Good luck in those outdoors. Thanks a lot, Bob. But for the injury, it might well have been Huffman sitting on top of the heap. Instead, it's Jimmy Gaddis who's standing by with our deck. That's a great mug shot with only number one below you, not a long string of numbers. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. You know, I just like to thank the good Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. I'd like to thank all the fans for coming out. Pro Circuit, Slip Fire, Kawasaki, all my sponsors, Bell, Axel, Scott, um, CTI. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I, I hope I don't forget anyone, but uh, my mechanic, Ali, all the people at Pro Circuit, Mitch, Bones, uh, Hooker, Jimmy, all the guys at Pro Circuit. You know, I'm just really excited about it. I'm glad that they gave me a chance to do it, and I'm happy that I could win it for them. And uh, most of all, my family in the stands were cheering me on, and, and then all the other fans that came out to cheer me on. Gaddis is champion. Phil Lawrence came and gave it a great effort here tonight. He'll come up second in the series standings again, Art Ekman. No better Phil, what about your start? Uh, it really put you behind the eight ball. Yeah, I didn't get that good of a jump. Um, I got out and I got cut off a lot. And, uh, it was track was real tight. It's hard to get around a lot of people, and uh, you don't know what it means to me. let's congratulate Jimmy for winning. And um, you have ever made. I guess that's all I can say. What was it like having to weed through the field past some 12 riders? I knew Damon and uh, Jimmy were up front, you know, and they were really good riding from their front. They don't make too many mistakes, and you know, I got real bummed out at the beginning. I shouldn't have, but I knew they were going to beat me, so. And so the 125 class is history. Gaddis is the champion. When we come back, the final 250 main event of the 1993 season. The season's finale, the final ride in Supercross for Guy Cooper. Admired, indeed loved by the fans. He says that has made this decision very difficult. Yes, it does make the decision really hard. Um, I've been busted up quite a bit the last few years, and... Uh, Monday mornings, Tuesday mornings starts to get pretty hard to get up from, and uh, it's just one of those things where I'm taking chances. I'm taking chances that I probably shouldn't be taking, and uh, it, it's, I think, in my safety, and I would like to just watch the younger riders come up. I think it's time to back out. The retirement of Guy Cooper, one of the major stories of this 1993 Supercross season. For more of the memories we'll all carry into the offseason, now let's begin with Bob Hanna and Art Ekman. Thanks, Dave. Being an ex-racer, anytime I look back at an event or a season, I immediately think of the winner. And the 1993 Supercross season will be no exception. But I won't only remember that Jeremy McGrath won. What will remain in my mind is the way he did it. His performance in the 93 series was the most dominant in the history of the sport. I'll remember when he was a rookie when the season got underway. Three events later, he took his first win of the year, and all of a sudden, he was a seasoned veteran. Remember how the wins added up? Four, five, six, they just kept coming, all the way to 10, a new single season record. And the way he got the wins, in my career, I've seen the best in the world, but I've never seen anybody get hole shots like Jeremy McGrath. Supercross is a sport that demands greatness, and in 1993, Jeremy McGrath easily measured up. All right, in a couple of years, when you think back about this Supercross season, what are you gonna remember most? Certainly, Bob, I'm going to remember Jeremy McGrath and the way he dominated the veterans as he did throughout the year. But I'm also going to remember the young riders and how they struggled for notoriety and the opportunity for fame and fortune in the future. In the eastern region, Doug Henry, a last-minute decision for Honda, was Mr. Everything. He won seven out of ten races to win the championship. He did it by charging through the pack and also with good starts. Through it all, Doug Henry maintained a rare quality. He's not only a fine racer, he's a fine gentleman. Then, of course, there was Ezra Lusk, mild-mannered and quiet off the track, on the track, a charging, aggressive rider that never quit. In the western region, I'll remember several of the riders. Damon Huffman, the only rider that won more than one race, but wasn't in the championship chase. And then there was Phil Lawrence. He might have been the dominant rider in the western region if he'd have kept his Suzuki upright. 
and then the series champion Jimmy Gaddis. He won the opener in the series and then time and again got up from disappointing falls to score points. Gaddis has a lot of heart. One final thought, the American Supercross scene has never experienced a broader base of interest internationally. Michelle Pichon of France came over and took a 125 race in San Diego. Pedro Gonzalez moved into the top five. He's from Mexico, couldn't find much competition down there, but has certainly done well in his first season in the 125s. And then Jamie Dobb was gunning for a top 10 position. He's from England. Jamie told me, expect more foreign riders next year because not only is the money the best in the world, the title is the most prestigious. Bob, predictions for 94. Well, our, what's going to be interesting for me is to see if the 250 crowd sits back and lets Jeremy McGrath dominate like the 93 season in 94. Well, Larry, wouldn't you know it? Every single thing that I had written down in my notebook, every single memory of this 93 season, and Hannah and Ackman have stolen it and leave us to come up with a couple of last things that will stick in our minds. You know, I, I think if we uh, think just a little bit, we'll come up with a lot of memories from 1993. One comes to mind. Every time there's a winner, there has to be a loser. And I want to think back at the early part of the season when the heavy-duty favorites, Bradshaw, Stanton, Kedrowski, these guys were supposed to do all the winning. Didn't work out that way. No one knows that better than number one, Jeff Stanton, the reigning series champ coming in, still hasn't won a race as we come here for the series finale. Where does the magic go? Stanton has wondered that throughout the 93 season. Damon Bradshaw, on the other hand, has scored a couple of wins, and he has shown uh, off and on that uh, he still has or does have what it takes to be a champion. However, more often than not, that left arm that is raised in victory was held at his side in defeat. It has just not been a good year for the veteran. They suffered throughout. One bright spot in all this was Mike Kodrowski. He emerged as a winner and as a potential champion in 1993. It's the old story of paying your dues. Finally, Kodrowski got that account full, came home with his first win at Daytona, won again later in the year, and ultimately was the one man who had a shot at Jeremy McGrath. The early shot belonged to Mike LaRocco for the second consecutive year. He took the season opener, unfortunately, for the second consecutive year. His season terminated due to a wrist injury. LaRocco never recovered. For Spectacular, it was hard to beat Michael Craig. This bail off, typical of his season in many ways. The difference this year, he was crashing while running up front. He's proven himself worthy of a factory ride. Craig will be a factor for next year. And the crowd looks on as Guy Cooper says goodbye to Supercross here in Las Vegas, his final ride of his career. The high-flying Guy Cooper will be missed by all of the fans. And Larry, I think we would be remiss if we didn't tip our hats one time to the mechanics, the men who put these motorcycles on the line, the men who do all the sleepless nights so that our helmeted heroes may have the opportunity to shine here on ESPN. It is main event time. Last drop of the gate of 1993 coming up. Everybody racing for bragging rights, for honors, for Cooper. Racing for, I guess, the memories as much as anything. Yeah, he's going to try this one last shot. I look for a lot out of Guy Cooper. One or two things will happen. He will either do great or Cooper will have one of those nights where he tries so hard, so hard, that it goes the other direction and he's going to flounder around the racetrack. And started in Orlando in January. It ends tonight here in Las Vegas. The gate is down and the main event is on. The 1993 series coming to a close and a great start for Larry Brooks. And a terrible start for Jeremy McGrath. What happened? Well, I haven't seen it often, but we've seen it here tonight. McGrath, where is he? Back there in the traffic jam somewhere. And Stanton with not a particularly good start. Matasevic, though, with the worst of all as he was hung up in that first corner. Color him gone. Uh, the leaders up front, meanwhile, ought to take a look behind them and say, hey, let's make us a little hay while the sun shines. Right at number 43, that's Ezra Lusk. Cooper's got himself a decent start. He's top five with Stanton right on his wheels. But the youngster, 17-year-old Ezra Lusk out of Bainbridge, Georgia, has the stars of Supercross behind him. Here's the battle for position. Earthquake Kehoe, number 22, pursued by Steve Lampson, number 21, a heat race winner. Look at this kid break away on the first lap. Lusk is gone. We know he's fast. We've seen him do this before. Yeah, but let me tell you two things about Ezra Lusk. One, he won the opening round of the Supercross season in the 
125 Eastern Regional uh, a series a year ago. That's his only victory as far as, oh, and Lampson running off the racetrack. Well, that's all right. We'll just cut that corner. Keep right on going. That's legal if you don't make up time. He certainly didn't. He lost. Since that win a couple of years ago, Ezra Lusk has not been able to stay upright for 20 laps. That's been his problem. <laughs> Cooper, meanwhile, trying to take advantage of a decent start and get rolling. We'll be right back. We're back in the Sam Boyd Silverdome. Larry Brooks, number 17, perhaps the big surprise here. It's been a long time since we've seen him run up front well into a Supercross race. He has Jeff Stanton on his rear wheel. Guy Cooper is in fourth spot as they work the whoops. Ooh, Coop caught the front wheel, hangs the left. Big disappointment for this man who rides his last Supercross race here tonight. He'll drop a couple of spots as number 21, Lamson, who's had an earlier shot, gets back underway. Larry, what happened? He's here? had trouble all night long in that whoop section. Remember, I talked about the timing that the track takes to get through whoop to do. You've got to be precise, and Cooper has too much adrenaline tonight. He just got a little bit hot. Way out front, Dave, is Ezra Lust, rider number 43, the Team Suzuki star. He is gone, but coming up, he got a terrible start. He was back in 12th, 15th place, something like that. Jeremy McGrath has really been on the gas. He's up now to, I think, the number four position. There he goes, uh, past Larry Brooks, uh, now challenging Jeff Stanton. What an incredible charge that is. Yeah, that's Stanton that he has in his sights. His teammate, whom he's beaten repeatedly all year long, McGrath, after blowing the start, hey, if you're going to mess one up, make it the race after. The race after you clinch the championship. McGrath is just unbelievable. They wondered if we could come from behind. You know, that's been the, the, the knock. If they, How do you knock a guy that's won like this? But the <laughs> knock was, he really will not be able to come from behind to win races. That's what they said. This guy is incredible. He has caught Jeff Stanton, and uh, he looks to me like he's not going to waste any time. He is uh, looking for just one little line, an inch. He'll be looking there. He's going to be around Stanton. He's going to make that pass before this one is over. And you know what? Oh, no. But Grath got sideways. He was, gonna go, he was going for a block pass, I think, Dave. We're going to have to take another look at it here in a second. But he was going for a block pass. I think he wanted to move Stanton out of the way. And uh, he still had time to catch McGrath. No more. He's got banners in his wheel. Oh, McGrath is not going to make it 11 for the season. Oh, well. Here it is again. What happened, Larry? Oh, watch him. He's starting to cut to the inside, and he just catches the rear wheel on that jump. It pitched him off the side into the hay bales. He landed on his feet. Everything is okay health-wise, motorcycle-wise, but he's well back in the pack. Meanwhile, the other end. Oh, boy, has he opened up some kind of lead. Well, is Lusk going to be able to keep it on two wheels tonight? That is always the question. When the qu Oh, now that was not fair. Did we put the whammy on him or what? I mean, you oh, called it. He boy. hadn't ridden 20 laps all year. Yeah, but you're the one that brought it up during the race. So if there's any bad luck to be blamed, it's going to have to go on to you. Ezra Lusk crashing, loses the lead. Now he's tangling with Mike LaRocco. Looks like he wants to come back. Meanwhile, Jeff Stanton is the guy that's making hay out front. LaRocco comes to a stand still wow then Morocco comes to another standstill Morocco challenged here by number 17 Larry Brooks and by his teammate Mike Kudrowski another of the uh, slow starters here this evening a lot of guys got off the gate badly so it's a Kawasaki battle for third and fourth as Ezra Lusk has recovered second spot Jeff Stanton is up and gone out front that's right Jeff Stanton the reigning series champ the man who has yet to win a race this year let's go back to that battle for the number three position teammates Morocco and Kudrowski the problem here is, as they fight each other, Kudrowski trying to pass, LaRocco trying to hold him off, they're going to drop back just slightly off the pace. So there goes their opportunities to catch the leaders of Lusk and Stanton. We'll be right back. We're back in the Sam Boyd Silverdome, and we're watching the series champion for, what, another 15 laps or so, 10 laps or so. Jeff Stanton, the leader, pursued by Ezra Lusk, the youngster, kid who would like to be Supercross champion before. Lusk goes down one more time, second time he's crashed tonight. You know, in fairness to Ezra Lusk, let me point out quickly that most of the great Supercross stars spend a season or two picking himself up off the ground. What's that old saying, Dave? You never know how fast you can go until you crash. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's what 
Ezra is going to. He don't feel sorry for him. He's going to rebound. He's going to be a great rider before this is over. Here comes Lampson now. While Ezra is probably feeling sorry for himself, trying to get back on the gas. Lampson says, "Hey, here's a chance for an easy pass." So he took the easy pickings and he moved one spot up. Meanwhile, out front, Stanton looking for his first victory of the season. He has company. The battle for second place now between Morocco and Kudrowski. And I'm telling you, were they not slowing each other down through the passing and blocking techniques, they would be up there hammering on Stanton's rear wheel. Kudrowski has yet to really make an aggressive attack on Morocco. He's been studying his line. He hasn't been able to get up alongside. Kudrowski would love to pick up that third win of the season while Morocco is hoping to finish in the style with which he began. Flips a bail there, loses ground. Here's the challenge yeah. as Kudrowski comes alongside. Yeah, see, but that's what I'm talking about. Morocco is trying to hold his lines very tight. The good lines on the racetrack. He's trying to stay in the very tight, not letting Kudrowski get the wheel inside. In order to do that, he's sacrificing some of that uh, wild speed. You know, you just don't ride with wild abandon when you're trying to do uh, a block situation. And that's what's slowing him down. About a bike length thing to be the average interval between the two. As Kudrowski nails the backside of that jump, they work their way past the lap, tied the hoop, and you get a sense of the speed here. But out front, Stanton is gone. There's no catching him here tonight. It's taken all season for it to happen. Great shot as they work their way close by the camera. The battle for second between two men, neither of whom has yet had the opportunity to live to their full potential in Supercross competition. Morocco's really got this section wired. Opens up a little advantage over Kudrowski. I think if I were a team manager at this point in time, I would have had a meeting that said, hey guys, if we get together and we're chasing someone the likes of Jeff Stanton, let's make a pact amongst ourselves. We'll not try to do any passing till we get right up there on Stanton. We'll both pass and then we'll have our battle. I might offer the responsible opposing <laughs> view. I think Jeff Stanton is going so fast right now. These guys couldn't catch him with afterburners. Morocco looks like he's going pretty fast to me. He is away from Kudrowski for the moment. They get the signal from the Kawasaki team. And they run Jeff Stanton down. We'll find out as we come back to Sam Boyd Silver Bowl in Las Vegas. We're back in Las Vegas. Mike LaRocco has begun to close down the gap on Jeff Stanton. And at the same time, pull away a little bit, although he's struggling right here. Don't give it all back, Mike. Fallen rider ahead of them, causing them no problem as LaRocco got out of shape through the whoops. That lets Kudrowski close back in, and it erases some gains that LaRocco had made. He was actually closing in pretty impressively on Stanton. Yeah, he was. Stanton is, is looking for that. You know, what's, what's running through their mind? That's what I, I'm leading up to. Stanton's looking for his first win of the season. He's got to be thinking, don't blow it. Don't get over anxious. Don't tighten up. Stay loose. And as a result, he's got to slow just a little bit. Then we look at this battle for the number two position among teammates, and that's leading up to some pretty interesting racing. Now, they have closed the gap slightly on Stanton. Uh, whether or not they can keep that pace or that distance uh, or that closing uh, a speed, I think, is what I'm, I'm uh, saying here, uh, remains to be seen as they're back battling amongst themselves. And uh, actually, Dave, I'm not sure what I'm leading up to here. <laughs> Well, Larry, that's a function of the unpredictability of Supercross. Well, I, I knew what I was going to say. I just, I forgot. I got sidetracked. Started talking about something else, then I forgot what I was talking about. I'm confident that what you were trying to do was set the stage for the drama that's about to unfold because, indeed, these two green bikes are running down the red bike. The Kawasaki's are catching the Honda. Whether they're battling each other or not, whether Stanton has slowed or not, this has suddenly become a three-rider race. Here is Stanton in traffic, and here comes LaRocco, and behind him, Kudrowski, and they're within striking distance, particularly with those lap riders taking some of the good lines away. Well, at this point in time, I got to like Stanton's chances, uh, if nothing more, that he has not been making the mistakes that LaRocco and Kudrowski have been making. Stanton seems to be the smoother of the trio, and uh, I think he's just kind of uh, watching everything very carefully on the racetrack. However, let's go back to uh, the adrenaline factor. 
Mike Kudrowski, Mike Rocco coming from out of the pack are certainly riding at this point faster than Stanton, and that just could carry uh, him, you know, carry either one of the two right past the defending champ. I think that's the big question. Is Stanton going to be able to step up the pace? In a season context, he was not able to do that when Jeremy McGrath put the pressure on by winning all the races. Now in the finale, these two guys are up to put the pressure on Stanton. He's going to have to pick up the tempo if he wants to pull out his first win of the year. Again, huh. Morocco clipped yeah. that bail. Kodrowski almost got by him. But we'll find out if they get the job done when we come back. We're back in Las Vegas, and Jeff Stanton is into the final lap. Kodrowski trying to reel in Mike LaRocco. LaRocco made a keen mistake just before the break. He has recovered to close and challenge Stanton as the white flag flies. Look at this, Damon Bradshaw, a lapper, pulling over and out of the way. He has not come to terms with the Las Vegas finale here this evening. What do you think, Myers? Is he going to catch him? <laughs> Good question. I said earlier that I like Stanton's chances. I still do. I think he'll be able to keep LaRocco behind him. And now watch. Maybe that'll be the stroke of bad luck that uh, goes on <laughs> to Stanton and makes LaRocco make the pass. Don't put the whammy on him. It's close, but i got a feel that Stanton's got what he needs. He's got about three bike lengths in hand and less than half a lap from home. It would take a major mistake for Jeff Stanton to give away this, his only win of the 1993 Supercross season. LaRocco trying valiantly up and over the triple but Stanton looks pretty smooth pretty salty he who has won three championships in this division didn't get it put together this year team Honda managed to hang on and Jeff Stanton wins his first race of the year over Mike LaRocco and Mike Kudrowski who settled for third in the last couple of laps it just didn't come his way he knew he was beat he protected what he had and comes home with a third place finish. The big crowd heading for the exit. The 1993 season is over. Stanton has won the finale from Morocco, Kodrowski, Lampson, and Lusk. Rounding out the top ten. Cooper in his final Supercross ride. Henry Brooks, McGrath, and Kehoe. Here's Stanton. Jeff, if I can say it's about bloody time, huh? That was a nice ride, but you waited a little too long to do it. Yeah, it's too bad I have to have him at the end and not the beginning, but uh, I said San Jose is a rebuild time for me, so a good way to rebuild for, 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 for next year. Uh, how about the Nationals? Are you looking forward to winning a few of those? Yeah, definitely. i got to win uh, Win them all. Uh, something to drink. Uh, the Supercross and next year, you say, uh, are you really pumped up for that? You know you can win a uh, few Supercrosses left in your career for sure. Ride. Yeah, I think I get, need to really prove to myself and everybody else, everybody, you, you, got you know, the old rider out here, so I can do it. I'm going to do it for another three years. Well, you've been so close. Like last week, you're second, you're right in there. You just need to, I think, work on your starts a little. Yeah, no, I didn't work on anything. I just feel there's no magic chance. There's just a little work for you. I've done anything any different. All right, good luck. In a Mike, an Stanton will complete the season third and well behind his teammate Jeremy McGrath. Meanwhile, the year closes on a bright spot for Mike LaRocco. Once again, a tough one out of the gate. Yeah, uh, not a good start in my heat race, but I couldn't pull another one off in the main, and I had to do one of my come from behinds again, which I'm getting tired of. <laughs> well, you really made a terrific, terrific comeback, though. I thought there for a moment it was going to be an, a, a bookend uh, season for you. Yeah, I did, too. I made uh, one too many mistakes. Uh, I was catching Jeff, and I had you know, I had the speed to win, but I couldn't uh, keep it going. I stalled it out there about halfway through the race and gave him too much time, but you know, I gave it all I got last race of the year, and uh, like you said, I tried to make bookends, but not tonight. And to that, I would only like to add this thank you to Larry Myers for a season's worth of insight. It's been fun having you alongside as our expert analyst. Well, Dave, I assure you it was my pleasure, and I thank you for the opportunity of working with you again. And let me extend those thank yous down to the pits to Art Ekman and Bob Hanna for all of the interesting tidbits they brought us all year. It was a very different season in the end. We're used to close competition for the championship. It came down to Jeremy McGrath, this amazing youngster who has such a great future in the sport of Supercross. Our congratulations to Jeremy. Our thanks to each and every one of you for being part of this 1993 season. For Art and Bob in the pits and for Larry Myers, I'm Dave Despain. So long from Las Vegas.